Hello everyone, I'm Extra Cheesy 87 and this is Let's Play Disco Elysium Part 34. In the previous video we came to confront Ruby and then died because uh, there's uh, six or seven heal checks in the conversation, which I found a little annoying. So we were forced to reload and... Annoyingly enough, it was literally the last line of dialogue that killed us. Because the game forced you to reload though, we did equip pain threshold gear uh, so we can attempt this skill check now and probably succeed. I, I guess we want to do this, I don't know. But yeah, I just really don't like this, the, the heal checks for talking to her. Because I mean, I was hoping there'd be a way to de-escalate the situation. But you did it. The compressor lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It doesn't seem like there is an alternative like option that. other but than just trying to smash it or letting her leave. I mean, maybe if you do the dialogue in like a certain way, there's another out. I don't know. You okay, Kim? <sighs> All good, officer. Another thing I was Be thinking careful. about. Uh, while I was redoing the conversation is that I think a better way to also do it is instead of it just being like you take damage every time you talk to her it should be like there's random skill checks that are kind of associated with what you're talking about like that way you know if you fail the skill check you take damage if you don't you don't take damage that way it feels a little less intensive of like hey if you don't have seven healing items you just die and it would like kind of reward you for having your character built up at this point by having a bunch of just various different skill checks instead of the just random damage that you can't really do anything about other than trying to just immediately break the machine and then potentially end the conversation and not get any info, info out of her. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Because like I don't know if we can still ask her questions. Because, I mean, I assume this escalates the situation now. Plus, I don't know why she doesn't just shoot us. Oh, fuck it. Uh, absolutely not. Uh. Okay, I would like to say, what are you doing? Because, like, I don't know. I'm worried that if I say, what are you doing? So just shoot herself, and I won't get the chance to do the skill check. But this might help make this easier. I mean, 72% is decent. All right, I'm not going to risk it because I'm worried that if I say, what are you doing? She's just going to shoot herself. But I mean, this one says, go, I don't know. What are you doing? Problem solving. Ma'am, put the gun down. That's not the solution to your problems. You are. Oh, yes, it is. Okay, didn't give me anything. She's truly Ooh. desperate. She thinks she has no other options. You need to give her options. Okay, what options? You know. Uh, I mean, so... Because if we believe her, she hasn't done anything, really. Here's the question. Do we believe her? Because it really is a she shed, she shed thing. Now, the main new information is that apparently we're working for the Puta Madre guy. That's the main thing we've learned here. If that's true, which presumably I don't, I don't really know why she'd be lying about that. Maybe we can talk her out of it? This is how you talk her out of it. It's the only scenario in which she lives. All right, fine. Walk away. She stares at you, frozen, the gun still in her mouth, eyes filled with dark intensity. Then something shifts in her. Gratitude, doubt. She's still ready to go. Her neck and shoulders relax, and her grip on the gun loosens. You don't have to do this. You're not cornered. I'm letting you go. Day of miracles. I'll take it. She runs past you, then past the lieutenant, and disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. Good call. Did my best. I would have done the same, had I not been incapacitated. 
He couldn't take it like you. It irks him. Then he gets over it. I think she didn't do it. Her tent. We should check it out. I mean, we, we pretty much know she didn't do it because of the gun stuff. So then the question is, like... Because I, mean, I don't know if Class A, like, why would she have access to, like, an antique rifle? There is the, the issue of the timeline, though. Because she said we came with people. And if she thought we were coming as a Puta Madre guy, that's kind of weird. Because it seems like she was running because of that, not because of her thinking we were here to investigate the murder. But yeah, so I mean, like, because I mean, there's a thought that kind of popped in my head that's like, what if we killed the guy? Like, what if we actually arrived earlier than we thought and we killed that guy for Puta Madre for some reason? Overwhelmed with guilt and kind of blacked it all out? Something like that? I don't know. But I don't think the timeline would work for that. Cause I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm really fuzzy on the... Because it happened Sunday. We got here... That next Friday? I believe? Now the question is, did we actually get there that Friday? Or did we get there... Before that? I don't know. Oh, why do I have so many freaking moralist points? What is it? Nobody even knows what moralism is, alright? Because it's like, I get they're supposed to be centrist, but like, that in and of itself doesn't really mean anything. Like, you know, center of what? Oh, thanks. Give me some health now. The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. Look inside. The tent looks old, but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. It reeks of cigarettes. Now on your flashlight on the books. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. See anything? Sift through the magazines? Rager Monthly. Journal of Material Science. More technological digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. A notebook. You pocket the worn brown leather journal. A trusted friend left behind. We should read this immediately. Like, right now. I am. And, you know, if she committed the murder, then, well, I'll feel a little bad, but not that bad. Well-loved journal with a brown leather cover and a brand named Schleiner, embraced on the back. I mean, essentially, I still have the same opinion for Classe. If she was the murderer and we let her get away, so be it. I still feel okay with the situation. Um, we don't have enough evidence to give like a death sentence to anyone a thick journal the cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket same in the cover it's made of full grain leather the lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name Schneller. this was important to her when it was still hers unwind the strap the journal falls open about two-thirds of its ruled pages have been filled Study the handwriting? The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently. Perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out. 
with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. Flip through the pages. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. Alrighty. Well, let's uh, we can let's start from the top. What kind of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. What are the diagrams of? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor, sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Anything personal? Short wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. Staff issues. Always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. How far back do the entries go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. What did she write the day Lely died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th, though. Well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except, but that's another matter entirely. You have no idea what she means. These are personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. What if we could try that again? And get a different logic thing here? What do we think she meant? The, the phrase loyal to a fault is interesting. You know, we don't really know why she would be loyal to Class A. Other than just like a f sense of friendship, but... Anything about La Puta Madre? That name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. That's... A little weird, since we know that she worked for him and is apparently afraid of him, but that would be maybe the illegal side of her operation, so I don't know if that's detailed in her journal. Small wonder. Would you talk about La Puta Madre in your journal? You do see an M, though. La Puta Madre? M is mentioned on March 9th and March 15th. Read the entry from the 9th first. Great. M's peon is coming to town, no doubt to investigate the lynching, but also I feel it in my okay, gut what day to is finally it? put a bullet in my head while I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Do we, do we have like a date? Because I would like to know what in-game day it is now. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? Were you supposed to find her, even apart from the investigation then? On M's request? No, you wouldn't do something like this. This must be a mistake. I mean, we wouldn't kill anyone, but Harry might. I mean, look at me. Whatever you may look like. You don't feel like a hired assassin. That was the one from the 9th, okay. 12th. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people, the boys, for example. But experience tells me, did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people, they'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. That must have been one hell of a conversation. What didn't say there was one on the 15th? And on the 9th and the 15th, but we just read the one from the 12th. So I don't know if that's just like the text is wrong or... What that about the 15th? Small wonder. Would you talk about La Puta Madre in your... 
Look at the cover again. Thick journal bound in brown leather. Okay, most recent entry. The most recent entry okay, is from But like, today. what is today? It re Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run. Not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. It looks like she might have been framed. That would be a first, or a fourth, but who's counting? He thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get framed. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's a good thing we didn't catch her. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. We have other reasons to arrest her. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than we does. Especially if she has problems with the Madre. Kim, do you think I'm really a Laputa Madre agent? Ah, <sighs> no, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. His trust is well placed. You aren't. You can feel it. And who do you think killed the Merc? Classy was the one who pointed the finger at Ruby. Perhaps she was trying to steer us away from herself, or... Yeah, the shot is interesting. I just kind of... Since it was never really mentioned as something that was odd, I just kind of never really questioned it. It's, you know, it is on the third floor, on the roof. I could kind of see it not being heard. No one heard the shot. Maybe she had an accomplice. Either way, we need to keep an eye on her. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling in rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. All right. I do want to equip some logic clothes real quick and see if we can get some different... I think we just need like plus two. I just want to see if we get a different logic thingy there. The thick journal. Short staff issues. Always tough on the leadership. Use nothing on. She is referring to betraying a previous employer. Does this suggest she did it in self defense? Oh, okay, yeah. Loyal to a fault, except dot, dot, dot. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. The thick journal. Wheel. So we're going to head back. All your station to find out more if you dare. I do dare. I, I dare very much. Let's equip our boots. Where are my boots? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Because, I mean, I don't really know how believable I find the idea of somebody shooting from off the roof though because I'm I mean like the angles are weird I mean I know they, they said something about maybe shooting from the coast but that doesn't seem very likely especially not with like a I don't know that just, that just doesn't seem very plausible to shoot all the way from the coast Plus, it's, I mean, it's like it's up on like the third floor as well. I don't know. I can't fast travel. I guess we have to walk. Maybe there's like a scene or something as we walk back. That or is up? Is it just that I'm too far? Yeah, we'll just walk. Whatever. I didn't realize I'd have to go all across creation to look at this thing. Okay. Pointless. Insulindian Phasmid, Kim. 
The trap is full of low poor things. Now we pretty much failed that, so. Which, granted, maybe if uh, the game's ending soon, I mean, I guess we still don't know if today's the final day or not. Hopefully not, I don't know. Because the day is progressing rather quickly. Stop. Just up ahead. Danger. Oh. What you have isn't enough. You'll need more firepower. A ranged weapon. Statistically speaking, sabers have proven to be rather ineffective against advanced military technology. Yeah, I just didn't want to go walking around with a gun in town. Be prepared. Make sure you have your pepper box in your hand. Your fingers reflexively reach for the Villiers 9mm pistol in your pocket. Well, I'm not sure I feel ready for it lies ahead. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, I've got your back. Alright, maybe things are coming to a head quicker than we expected. Let's get the frickin... Sword and gun. Okay, we should say in case we get around. Oh, you failed a skill check, you instantly die. Okay, are you class A? I can't tell. <laughs> Was I right? Were you the merc? Apparently I can't talk to you. I can't... Okay, just... I'm all out of shit to give, loincloth. Why do we have to Welcome walk to this far away to talk to him? Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. All right? Shut up. You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. You should stay silent. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The Kipt is merciful. Okay. You're we'll not class A at least. If we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander, I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower. And he knows it. Peaceful. Sounds like the armored figure is re- Who the hell is this? Nest in your abdominal cavity, like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible. Oh, there's another one over there. But you can hear them. Oh, he's got a rifle. Okay, I didn't... Is one just supposed to be three? Or was it three plus Lely? See, I thought it was just two. Fuck, there's a third one. Okay. How did we miss something like this? This third one, he is the most dangerous of them all. Heavily armed. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. Alright, what do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. Yeah? He doesn't want to, but he must. Big one's the mercenary at the gates. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. A sound strategy. He's the leader. We're out of time. The mercenary tribunal. Hello, it's the police. I know everyone's always happy to see the police. We have a sword and a gun. We're gonna def we're gonna chop Get your bullet off, in half. Comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. Hey, where'd my gun go? He licks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd. Losing his balance for a moment, he staggers backward. So this guy, I don't know. He seemed more receptive to the idea of peace than the other two. So maybe we won't have to deal with him. I think he's calmed down a bit. Plus, he got a helmet on, so there's nowhere easy to hit. Pig, fuck! Okay, never mind. He doesn't sound that, that calm anymore. I lied. Okay. Easy now. 
No one needs to die here today. Oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. Where'd my gun go? No one is going to kill anyone. Uh, don't don't, don't say it like that. And talk like civilized human beings. You know, don't say no one is going to kill anyone because that's like sounds like a challenge. Say no one needs to kill anyone. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. Suddenly, the grip of your sidearm feels comforting and warm in your hand feels like it's saying do it i don't know that doesn't shoot him in the mouth shoot him before he shoots you no wait it's good you have that gun it really is just soften him up first present an argument even if it comes to a fight it's always a good idea to drink i it kind of first. agree get under his skin because i mean i feel like realistically there's no way we can beat these guys in like a straight up fight because, I mean, they've, they've clearly said their armor is invincible to regular bullets. So like, even if we were to say, like, headshot these two, this man is invincible. So, like, we shouldn't be able to beat them. I don't know about this getting under his skin. What if he gets under yours? I'm barely keeping your hand from trembling here. Peace. Always peace. It has yeah. worked thus far. Start with the first idea you have, then move down from that, please. Didn't we be getting more here, I thought? Because then we have our thought. Plus two hand-eye coordination against enemies and armor. And we have four natural. Shouldn't we have six here? Six plus this? Does that thought just not work? Like this is like the one time it should be applicable and it doesn't work. That's cool. All right. First things first. I know you got a third guy. Rude. Rude is the killer. Rude, the killer. Hoan Cloven. He doesn't talk much. What's up? All of you cunts inside out. What was that, Rude? Rip you open. The killer? The gunner. The raddest. The killer. What do you think he does? Garden? There, on the rim of Owen Clerven's helmet, you count little stick figures. 19, 20, 21. I'm a killer, too. You're a tick sucking pig. I'm going to show you. What are we waiting for? Let's blow that pig fucking mouth off his face. Lance Corporal, just fucking shut up and wait for your order. Hey. He is not used to commanding or leading. Hey. He feels uncomfortable. He'd rather shoot to kill. And blue eyes. Oh yeah. And what about Downwell? I don't know what Downwell is. <laughs> First things first, they didn't do it. Yeah. Who did that? And what if we what if we say it was us? I don't know. It feels like kind of the wild card that might throw people off their game. No, wait. He didn't. He is tense. Like a steel spring under full load. My partner doesn't believe me, but I probably did it and I can't even remember I did. You think this is funny? What if I just shot one of your pals here for fun? Huh? How about the kid? That'd be fucking funny. Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who... Why doesn't he believe me? The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him. All together. Titus said we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud. In a public place. He was shot. He wasn't hanged. You're lying. 
Dr. Paul Hurley. A Kiel Model 40 revolver, eight rounds in the barrel. The gun slowly sways in his hand from the inebriation. Because, I mean, I do think it is possible we're the ones who killed him. I don't know. I mean, that just feels like it would make sense as, like, the twist. I don't know the logistics of it yet because, like, I don't... There's no calendar, so it's hard to figure out if we arrived in time. Because, I mean, it's very possible we arrived before it was initially stated we arrived. You heard wrong. She and these men have been helping us find the shooter. The hanging was only a cover-up. Fucking bias. Okay. He, he, he didn't shoot any... He didn't shoot in the air? The shot rings in your ears. A low, tinny ring. Then the Hardy Boys yell something. The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot has flowed over her head, crashing a small pane of the glass window behind her. I missed. And it's one shot down. Not true. He purposely uh. over-aimed and shot the window. You had him second-guessing himself. Only for a second. Okay. Do not assume he will miss the next time. I know what I heard, Corti. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. That doesn't sound good. You need to change the topic now, or there will be another shot. All right. Suggestion or rhetoric? We have a higher chance with rhetoric. But I feel like suggestion is what we should do. But I don't think talking about the hanging van is a good idea. I feel like this is going to rile them up more. But I'm like, suggestions are jam. Okay. But then, then there's also a part of me that's like, this is the easiest one to pass, which makes, has me a little, like, feel like it might not be the best one to do. But I am interested by, like, which way this goes. Dangerous. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. Okay. Who are you, Cordy? Sergeant Major Raoul Cortiner, reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground. As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click softly. Corti. Cortinar. Major Raoul Corti Cortinar. Friends with Lely. Raoul and Lely. For killing, maiming, and humiliating our commanding officer, you're all sentenced to death by lead. Okay, what did they tell me earlier? Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. No one says good things about Lely. <laughs> Montanal 41. That really happened, didn't it? Is that, that's what he told us about, right? Because, I mean, this is just like a lie. Nobody liked Lily. And this one, I feel like that would go against what they just said here. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. Because I feel like, that, like this might rile them up more. But I don't really know what this means. But it feels like the least bad of the ones maybe our colonel did what he had to do it was either one cunt or a hundred of them rude here in your ship pipes ready to fucking he likes to fire mortars at random coordinates wipe out mud huts like that when he gets bored lately knew how to command he was a good commander i can see you miss him oh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. He would have commanded this fuck hell way better than I did. But that didn't happen. Because hey, see, Bill and Kipty the Kipped here fucking murdered him. Had him stink the village up for two weeks after. And you fucks did nothing. I had a bear protect him for a while. Listen, man. We told you we 
told us what? What did you say? Who said that? Tattoo fuck. You'll die first. Like, I just, I don't want to, because I feel like this is a lie. I feel like we, we've heard nothing good about Lely. This class, I kind of liked him a little bit. And this one, I just, I don't know. I feel like this is going to rile him up. But I also kind of want to say it because it proves that we, like, looked into the murder some, maybe? Yeah, blue eyes. Baby blue, yeah. Like someone fucked up and put a baby's eyes on a grown man. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down cloths. The colonel did not deserve to go out like that, I promise. Find his killer. Cop. His killer stands right there. Shitting his pants, and you're standing in the way, protecting him. I know what this tactic is, Silo Sam. You're gonna die with them. Right here. Big talk, but you got him to admit he's a bad leader. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. Okay, that makes this check slightly easier. Let's think of an argument. All right, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Krenel this is not a good argument. <laughs> this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. I mean, there, there are three war criminals who like delight in slaughtering innocent people. I don't know if they really care about the rules of engagement or proper conduct. Really? None of this looks like it's going to do anything but piss him off. Okay. Okay, so down. Oh yeah, yeah, I do remember. So Downwell was what they were for before Krennel. Okay, we're gonna click this one just because it's like knowledge that maybe we wouldn't potentially have by default. What always happens when you get good at your job? That name meant night raids, fucking extrajudicial funky time, burn villages, shit. It sounds bad on the radio. The same thing happened when we were called whatever the fuck it was. Probably won't be called Cronell for much longer either. Not after this shit. Okay, it's not much, but he's thinking about something else, and his hand is off the gun. This did something. Where's Classe, by the way? Who the fuck is that? Classe, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left. Yeah. Unarmed, hunched. But keeping it together. Gart, what the hell are you doing here? What am I doing? My <laughs> fucking establishment is under fire. All right, guard. You know how much windows cost? You, you, you get a, you get, you get a little, you get to move up on the character power rankings for that. What do you mean she left? She left. Her room's cleaned out right before these assholes showed up. Fair. That that does make her seem pretty sus. We should have arrested her. Yeah, maybe. You can feel how upset he is with himself, just for a second. Then the fear takes over. I don't regret the decision. The hey, Bushman! Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! She's gone. Forget about it now. Concentrate on this. Okay. We'll, we'll do this, and then we're gonna shoot this guy. Yes. So what? It's okay. Didn't sound like nothing. Sounded like you were about to break into a sermon. Was that it? Enough already! What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat! Interrupt me again and I will execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. Help! You may notice the gun is not pointing at him. Gun, and your hand goes numb from the explosion. We have one bullet left. Look through the smoke rising from the barrel. The smoke drifts west with the wind. You hear the plaza erupt in violence. Quick draw, Slow, McGraw. Okay, Kim. You have a bullet. We have a bullet. There is a hole in his cheek. Blood gushes out. 
As he stumbles backward, eyes filled with rage and disbelief, gurgling, muttering something unintelligible. I mean, I still feel like our ass is grass. His lips, moving, swollen with fear, are trying to say, shoot him, shoot him, but he can't. To your right, the killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. His moves are steady, but the long barrel of the rifle sways slowly. On the plus side, we do have our armor, so in theory, if we don't get shot in the head, we're fine. Our, this is, this, our health is like already down, apparently. Uh -huh. Let's think for you a second. Steer down the barrel of the gun. You see Rude's mask behind it, his eyes in the slit of the helmet, like a camera lens, focusing on you. 0.6 seconds remain. There are six little black dots in the tip of the thick barrel, like a honeycomb. This is a knock cannon. Oh, that's bad. It shoots six rounds in one pull of the trigger. God, you're so frail. Too frail to think further. Time is running out. Kim. From the corner of your eye, okay. you see the lieutenant raise his pistol and aim it at Rude. As long as he doesn't shoot us in the head, we should be theoretically okay. A low shot rings. You feel a tapping like rain on your chest plate. Come on. Heavy chest plate. Chest rain. plate. Then the sound of dice rolling as the cuirass distributes the shot evenly from plate to plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got hit. The armor took most of it, but still your ribcage burns. Feels like blood is slowly seeping into your lungs. It's, it's fun. God, please. Yeah, 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 Kim. You said you passed seven out of ten times. Let's hope this is one of the seven. Two shots ring at once. One from the lieutenant's pistol and the other from DePaul's. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. Ooh. You hear Probably a hit lady. behind you. It's based on the trajectory. He screamed. Glenn, dying Ooh. in a puddle of blood behind you. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers oh god watch out you see two crazed eyes stare at you through all the smoke oh. and the panic uh, we shot With him blood gushing from his face the man raises his pistol at you then he squeezes the trigger him in the eye the look of vengeance framed in blood lips shaking this is the last thing he'll do on earth but he will do it he is your end here it comes death well i don't know there's a part of me that's like what if we just let it happen because <laughs> i feel like everyone's gonna click this even if it's a super low chance but like what if there's a reward for just i don't know hoping he doesn't kill you You simply blink, then something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. God damn it, why'd he go for the legs? I never found the leg armor. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. A distant blur as you recede into it. Listen through the darkness and the pain? The Hardy Boys are screaming, fighting, dying. Someone jumps over you. Nearby gunfire. I'm a little pissed that us. shooting the guy in the head didn't do anything. Stop! The cop! Protect the cop! He's down! What do I see? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. Um, live fast, die old. Yes, keep talking. Stay awake. Look at me. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy. 
and the sounds ever more distant, and a cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away, almost gone. And what but about the lady? You sense something behind him. A slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there, raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Kim! No, you say, and hand out your firearm to him. We got one bullet troubles, left, buddy. And your eyes are full of fear. That's all it takes. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant moves like a spring unloaded. He grabs the gun from your bloody hand and fires behind him. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound disappears, like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world. This is death. One more door, baby. One more door. Do I become a ghost now? Brother, you already were a ghost. Up there, screaming along with all of them. Scaring each other. Haunting each other. It's the living who are ghosts. The dead are silent. They don't rattle windows or write letters in blood. The living do. Leave them behind. Rest. Nah, oh, man. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here. Forever. Keep falling. Deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Over the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep and rotting and being disinfected and smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in that his sounds mouth. good so here's my question drifting in painkillers thrashing in his bones did we actually hit the time limit or is this scripted to happen after you talk to ruby because i'm not really sure i feel like we hit the time limit because i presume this is an ending and we did get two new things to investigate that we weren't allowed to so I guess we were just too slow so we hit the time limit he can't go not before the case is solved or maybe not I don't know there was a radio because I really don't like the idea of there being a time limit in the game personally sounds. good morning Elysium soon you will return to the world hours Turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. It was him. He is the infernal engine. He never stops. He only gets wild. You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. Okay, it's been two days. Double, then triple from the pain. They fix my window. They fix my window. Malav. Sunrise, Arabellon. <laughs> piss jacket. You took it off. What? Did we? Were we wearing our piss jacket? The room. It's clean. Mister Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. Long have I been out? Two days, in and out. You've been up enough to take Droamin and curse, and drink water. The piss jacket. Kim, you took it off? Yes. The joke wasn't funny anymore. I took it off. The close proximity of death must have made the lieutenant contemplate his life choices. 
He's done with the jacket. But you weren't ever wearing it. We never got you to wear it. Could we have gotten you to wear it? What happened? What happened? You shot the Major in the face. A firefight ensued. Dead? Yes. Anybody else die? A bloodstained killer. Well, we already knew that. As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He hit the cuirass. I heard it go off. I was looking for a clear line of sight to him. He sounds a tiny bit sorry. He did not find it before you got hit. That's fine. I shot and wounded him. While Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. He did not survive. Um. This is not the first person to die in his place. He goes on. Mm, maybe that's for the, his other partner. It's, it's been kind of alluded to as a sore subject. Titus, Fat Angus, and Theo charged. Angus and Theo did not make it. They both died before they made it to intensive care. Titus survives. So do Alain and the musician. I forget his name. Eugene? Yes. He's still alive too. Look how bad for Fat Angus. Theo. At least Theo was old as shit. He was kind of mean to me. Not that that means he should die, but... You were bleeding out. You said something. I don't know what. And you warned me. I was able to disarm Officer De Paul before she got the jump on me. Thank you. I killed her. And that's what happened. Okay. So the one guy you just said was wounded. Um... So they're all dead? De Paul was the last to die. Everhart had their bodies returned to Connell. Okay, so several. the other one did die. Company is yet to retaliate. Why? Because we deterred them? Or Joyce did? Maybe the harbor in full lockdown is too costly a target. Or maybe... Maybe they are simply taking their time and will attack soon. Though he only smoked one a day. This is the one. <laughs> How many casualties on the Union side? Four. Glenn, Theo, Shanky. Shanky? And Angus. The fat one. He took a lot of bullets. That's... All. Absolute disaster. Yes, officer. Seven people are dead. Seven? It's not a success. The six or seven? But what's done is done. The violence is cordoned off. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. Man, and I even got that sweet shot off too. And we are still alive, both of us. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. When you say sunrise, I mean, I know what he said, but... Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary saying. Oh yeah, it's on our gun. It served you well. At war today? The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. I do... I don't know. I mean, it makes me wonder if there was like a peaceful solution there, but... There's a part of me that's like, I feel like if we didn't do anything, they were just going to open fire? I think we may have held it off for now. Barely. Ouch. That's right. Ouch, indeed. Ouch. It's not ouch time yet. You just got the Drouamine pill an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. Bad am I hurt? Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your tie. It appears no yes, major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and the bacterial infection treated with... Too bad we never heart. found those, uh... Legs. The bruising in your shoulder is negligible. The armor took the brunt of the fire. Can I walk? We will see. If it's possible, then by pure willpower alone, you are going to have to become a psycho locomotor. I'm a psycho locomotor? Good. You'll need to be. Whatever that is. Are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from that woman beating me with the butt of her gun. I try to not move too much. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see her coming. Stupid of me. Anyone from my station been here? No. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vitmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. 
So, I mean, I guess these guys are... So, they're the ones in our crew, then, I guess. Because I do remember they mentioned Jean in the... In our one little, like, epiphany when we were talking to her. So I guess it is... But they said it was three, so there's one other guy that we don't know about. Because there's the lady, then Jean, I think he was wearing the blonde wig. Back to that shithole, he says. Isn't that strange? I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Ah, uh, you haven't seen any, have you? I'm sure they are worried about you. Mm. That means he hasn't seen them around while you were out. They're not really worried about you. If they were, wouldn't they be here? They're so worried about me, where are they? I don't know. That's between you and them, he thinks. Not my station, then who treated me? I did. I didn't know you could do that. It's part of a detective's task chain. You can do it too. Mm, I wouldn't trust us. Can you? You're pretty sure you can't. <laughs> Alright. Don't make me slow Easy walk now. for the rest of the game. Lieutenant turns double again before your eyes. An orange hue of pain. How are you? Feel fantastic? Let's rock. He nods. What happens now, Kim? I honestly don't know. Good, because I do. Do you? Because we can't talk to Everhart. The harbor is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. And we find Classe. Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of wild pines. That or we figure out There's if we're the bad ones who killed him. But like, I don't know why would we would... Squad. I mean, that's like an idea that I feel is like appealing to me because it feels like an interesting twist. But we don't really have any logical reason for why we would have killed this guy. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Who killed him? I don't know. I think your incredibly dangerous theory about you being the killer was incorrect, however. There is not one piece of evidence to support it. I don't know, man. We're kind of wild. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. All right, um, well, there is the bunkers. This is because we're a Puta Madre peon, isn't it? Don't be narcissistic. Half the cops in Revachol West are his peonies. Even if you are, it is not a decisive factor in this Yeah, but case. we're not just, I mean, she was, we were like famous, apparently. That does make some sense. Uh, the fucking Maybells, Kim, the flowers? An antique bullet from a Bell Ma Grave 444 millimeter, 446 millimeter. It's extremely easy. There are thousands lying around from the war, all completely unusable. It's precisely how easy it is that makes that bullet useless. Okay. Um. What about the hole in the wall? I don't know. That's been there for years. Old bunkers. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Revachol is full of them. But they seemed so mysterious. I can't believe they're fucking useless. No need to be melodramatic. You know what I think about solving crimes? He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Solving crimes is super easy. Really? Because to me, it seems solving crimes is hard. Solving crimes correctly is hard. It's very easy to solve a crime. You just need to find someone to pin it on. He sounds surprisingly weary. That concussion must be making him dizzy. You're not ready to give up, are you? No. Are you ready to limp? I'm ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? Let's just wander around until a clue presents itself. Let's do that. Same as just the cigarette on the sole of his boot. And then he drops on my damn floor. Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. Hmm. There's a part of me that's like, I mean, 
Like I said, I don't really want to save scum at all in this playthrough. I mean, we kind of did earlier, but that was just because we died. I am a little interested to see what plays out if you, like, rile them up and then don't shoot the guy. So we might explore that next video. Like, we, we would continue with this save regardless where, you know, the six people died or whatever. But I am a little interested just for the sake of, like, my own personal knowledge to see what happens. Like, I see if it's even worse or if there is is actually a better, uh, a better solution. Now, even if there is a better solution, we wouldn't go with it. But because I, I made my decision to shoot that guy in the head and, you know, I stand by it. But yeah, we might investigate that next video just for fun. I am extra cheesy 87. Stay tuned for the next part. And bye, guys.